Good evening. The first CD I made sounds a bit snooty and posh, doesn't it? Was this one. And I had to choose a title for it. I chose the title of one of the songs, Dangerous Love. My two young fellas, boys, were not very impressed with the title, thought it was very presumptuous and didn't associate ministry of the stuff that I sang with danger at all. And I haven't explained my own theory and reason for so doing, for choosing such a title. But it just seemed to me on reflection that the hot spots I'd found myself in, the somewhat risky situations I'd found myself in, uh, as a result of making choices informed by my discipleship and following Jesus. For instance, when I was working in Battersea, central London, I frequently walked past a kebab shop. I walked past it one evening and there was an uproar going on there. Well, hardly an uproar, two people. One was a young man arguing with the owner of the kebab shop who was wielding his butcher's knife. I could have walked past. I just should have walked past, but I didn't. I walked in. Fortunately, the fracas never emerged and the young man went away. Another time, when I was working as a youth worker in Telford, alongside with other youth workers, we and ran a weekly disco. It attracted about 400 kids, so it was quite a big do. And from time to time, the situation would arrive when we'd hear rumour that a couple of, of uh, gangs were likely to meet there. So in the evening, as the evening unfolded, my choice was where do I stand? Where do I put myself so that a conflict may not arise? choosing the hot spot as it was in those situations. Inspired by my desire, of course, to preserve peace and good relations and so forth. Thirdly, when I was working in South London, during the time when the Brixton disturbances stroke riots took place, I wouldn't call them ripples, but the waves came into our area and I was minister of a church youth and community centre which had very seriously intended to offer hospitality to the various immigrant groups that were settling in that part of the country then, including having an all black youth club. There was an incident in which the pub, oh, I need to tell you this, round the corner from where we were, there was the national headquarters of the National Front. And during a very unfortunate incident, I won't go into story too long, some of our young people were involved in a hit on what we might call the National Front pub, smashing some windows and so forth. The day after, the youth worker and myself thought it would be wise counsel to try and stop any proliferation of the incident if we visited and uh, tried to make peace, which we did after praying together rather fervently. Each of those occasions demanded a choice that was made and the choice was made because of my desire to make some, do some good, preserve some peace or whatever. They were intentional acts which we took place we shouldn't be surprised, of course, that following Jesus sometimes lends you in these situations. We're in the beginning of Lent, the time when Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, his hot spot. And the Gospels make it very clear that this was a very intentional act. I'll read you something from St. John's Gospel. It's entitled in the book here, Jesus Predicts His Death. John chapter 12 from verse 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, Jesus says. 
I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it. The man who takes his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Dangerous love, isn't it? Dangerous thing is love. Time for the song. <laughs> Try to understand all the hurt you do each time you turn aside, and from my love you hide. I can only cry just a little bit more for you. I've tried so hard to show my love for you, done more than anyone expected me to do. I've given you all I am in the hope that you just can see in this some prayers. Come follow me, said Jesus. A new life beckoned, full of promise, full of hope, not without risk. A new life, full of surprises, new experiences, challenges and uncertainty. We give thanks for those who have been followers throughout the centuries. So many who have surrendered themselves to peacemaking, reconciliation and courageous action. Now we pray, reveal to us what such a life looks like today. We are mindful that we live in relative safety and secure circumstances and a culture which is cautious when it comes to risk-taking. It is not so for everyone. We pray for those whose very faithfulness, worship and service put them in danger. We pray for those whose daily life and occupation may require them to confront danger with bold and brave action. The firefighters, police, soldiers, emergency workers. 
that this time we remember the rescue teams who fly off to disaster zones, Turkey and Syria, now being the places where for love of neighbours far away they choose to be. We pray that in our churches we may be capable of bold decision making, courageous preaching, sensitive and inclusive pastoral care. May the Holy Spirit of Jesus enable us to address and deal with the challenges that confront us as we seek to live hopefully, faithfully and lovingly, always seeking to prosper justice and peace. And now this day is ending. May the peace of the Lord be with us. The Holy Spirit reassure us and anoint us in the morning as surely as the dawn will break. And as we remember at this time and approach Jesus' hot spot in Jerusalem, we're surely conscious of all that people did to him. But it's remember we remember that its focus for is is all that Jesus did for us. Thanks be to God. Amen and good night.